Welcome everyone to the weekly Q&A here on OTRS Central. I will let you know now that I have split this up into two parts since there was enough of a response to be able to do so. Uh, part one of this, which is this video here, is going to be the Twitter questions for this week's Q&A. Part two will be the Facebook questions that were submitted via the OTRS Central Facebook page. So going forward, that is probably going to be the format. Um, you know, in terms of whether you want to submit your questions on Twitter or Facebook, that's up to you. I will tell you is that I will go through and kind of glance through and see the questions that interest me or I think the questions that you'll most want to hear answers from out of me. And as a result, those will be the questions that will be picked both on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, so just keep that in mind. That means that sometimes when you post a question on, let's say, Twitter or Facebook, it may get answered. Sometimes it may not. Keep in mind, if I answered every single, let's say, Facebook question and Twitter question in a Q&A, it would be a two-hour-plus video. And I have no interest in doing a two-hour-plus Q&A on a consistent basis. And hopefully none of you have an interest in watching me for over two hours answering a bunch of questions from other people. You know, 10, 15 minutes, that's good enough. As Smokey would have said, a YouTube video, and sometimes i got to remember this, and other people need to remember this too. A good YouTube video should be like sex, 15 minutes or less, where you make sure you get yours. The other person gets theirs. Eh, it doesn't really matter. Anyways, let's move on. All right, so the Twitter questions. Thanks to you guys that submitted your Twitter questions to at OTRS Central hopefully using hashtag OTRS Central, both wrestling and non-wrestling questions. Let's go ahead and get started here. AJC7J, has there been a time where WWE proved you wrong in a good way? Oh, yes. Most recent example of that would be Daniel Bryan. When the American Dragon Bryan Danielson signed with WWE to their developmental territory, what was it, back in 2009? I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. I'm like, what the fuck is he going to do there? What the hell are they going to do with him? I thought it was the epitome of a square peg in a round hole. I'm like, the first time Vince really sees this guy, he's going to look at him and say, what the fuck is this midget supposed to be all about? So I thought. And then even as time went along and they were, you know, initially giving him a nice push, I'm like, well, they're going to find a way to fuck it up. They won't go all the way with him. And they ended up building a WrestleMania 30 event around him that was relatively well received. That was an example of where I was clearly wrong. And I'll admit that for damn sure. Now, I'm not the only one for sure, but you know, I'll focus on me. You asked about me. That's a time where they proved me wrong in a good way, so to speak. Colorado MMA fan. Will you watch CM Punk's UFC debut? Probably not. Probably not. I just don't care about UFC. I don't really care about CM Punk, so therefore I don't really care about seeing CM Punk fight in the UFC. You know, if he gets his ass rocked and knocked out the first time, will I come on here and do a video laughing about it? Probably, and I won't be the only one, but will I be going out of my way to watch it? No, if I happen to watch it, you know, it is what it is. And did I watch any of Brock's UFC fights? No, I did not. Uh, Daquan Hayes, one, two, three, four. Is Mickey James underrated as a great women's wrestler? I don't think so. I think most people give her her proper due. I think most people respect her. And then what was the worst TNA heel faction? Immortal or Aces and Eights? Immortal was bad. That was terrible. It was another NWO type of schmoz of a bunch of old guys and nobody was spotlighted. And it just ran amok and it was stupid and it was so many things. But Aces and Eights was a whole different level of bad. But when I can point to a singular moment that really drove me away from TNA, even though it was only within the last 12 months where I stopped having interest in TNA and stopped watching TNA, I go back to Aces and Aids, and that's when it really started to become just too much. That's what built that foundation. That's what was starting to get me to that point and really driving me away from that product. Immortal was bad, like I said. and There were a lot of things that were bad about it. But it was aces and eights, and the fact that this storyline will never fucking die. It never had a purpose. It never had a point. There was just so many things wrong with it. That, to me, was the worst TNA heel faction. Our Roz underscore Ty. Does it feel like WWE is just screwing up 
Dean Ambrose and Roman right now with whatever it is they're trying to do. Um, I don't know if I go that far because I do like the fact that they are keeping an on-screen association between Dean and and Roman. I like the fact that they're actually making them out to be friends. It's something that I think that has been very much a lost art in wrestling as a whole. So I like the fact that they're going here with this, especially for two baby faces, and it makes so much logical sense for them to do so. I mean, you know, they've still got Roman and Ambrose in pretty big spots. So I don't know if they're totally screwing them up. Could they do things better with them, though? Yes. Uh, Dexter C73, will the WWE ever stop being satisfied with mediocrity? Um, as long as they continue to turn some type of profit, the answer will probably be yes. As long as they are able to continue to pay their shareholders their dividends and there's not a lot of complaints from the shareholders, the answer is probably yes. What would really force them to stop being satisfied with mediocrity is if their ratings got to a point where the USA Network started to say, whoa, what the fuck is going on here? We were paying for one level of performance and we're getting half of that performance. And we're, so basically, you know, we're paying you twice what we should. You know, when that pressure would start to come and or if network uh, subscriptions really stagnated for a long period of time, uh, if live event attendance dropped even more, uh, you know, all those things, if their profit margins dwindled to a point where they were basically non-existent or they were effectively in the red, that might be the time where they stop being satisfied with mediocrity. Until that happens, don't expect any major changes. Koi 24-7, what is your overall opinion on James Storm? Um, it's a shame because here's a guy, a TNA originally, been there forever. You know, when I think of TNA, he's one of those guys that I think of. You know, I think of guys like him. I think of AJ Styles. I think of Bobby Roode. You know, I, th I think of these type of guys. You know, for me, going back in the day to TNA, I think of the alpha male Monty Brown. You know, pounce, baby, pounce. Uh, but James Storm, a guy that I thought fit in with TNA in terms of if they were trying to make themselves a southern type of wrestling company, um, a guy that I've always had a lot of respect for his work. Uh, a guy that I'm not sure that I ever built a company around, but for TNA, I always thought he was a guy that was lost in the shuffle uh, at the expense of veterans that didn't need the spot that they were being given because TNA never really got the return on the investment that they gave to all these guys. Uh, James Storm should have been a bigger player for TNA than he ever ultimately ended up being, and it's a shame that he was in a lot of ways wasted over the years. To me, anyways. Uh, Jack C. the Ripper. With Lesnar coming back early and not scheduled for SummerSlam, could we see Reigns getting that title shot and winning against Rollins? Uh, maybe. It would depend on if WWE wanted to go with Reigns and Sheamus, and I'm not sure they want to go there yet. They might not feel comfortable with Sheamus' return yet and where he's at with the crowd yet. I, I don't really know. I mean, it could be. I mean, we'll see. I, I can't imagine Lesnar's not going to be scheduled for SummerSlam ultimately, though. If they don't have a schedule for SummerSlam, they're fucking morons. Uh, main event jobber. Do you think the Knicks should trade Carmelo Anthony? Uh... Whether they should or not is irrelevant. It's a matter of whether or not they could. That's a big thing. At this point in time, Carmelo Anthony needs the Knicks because in that situation, you can jack up a lot of shots and get paid a lot of money. And the Knicks need Carmelo Anthony because they need somebody that can put some asses in the seats and they need somebody that can hit some shots. They're kind of stuck with each other. Whether they like it or not at this point, they're stuck with each other. And both sides ultimately made their bed, and now they have to lie in it. That's the truth of the matter. Uh, and then he also asked, do you think GFW will get a TV deal? That's why I at, took to the OTR Central Facebook page and Twitter and asked, I believe it was yesterday, because I saw they were talking about Bobby Roode was going to be there for television tapings, and I apparently had missed that memo about global farce wrestling getting a television deal. I'm like, why are they doing television tapings 
when they don't even have a TV deal. It'd be one thing if you filmed a pilot episode and then took it to networks. I understand that. But when I hear TV tapings, that to me implies several weeks worth of programming in the can, and I don't freaking get that. One week I understand, especially if you're trying to get that pilot scene and get somebody to buy into it. Uh, do I think they'll get a TV deal? Maybe. Maybe. They've been, they've been going at this shit. How long have we been talking about GFW? Fucking year and a half, almost two years now, and they still don't fucking have one. So it doesn't look good, honestly. And then Nat Sucks Gray 56 closes us out by asking, Why don't you watch ROH? Because if I wanted to watch karate, I would go to a fucking dojo. Uh, in all seriousness, I'm not a huge fan of the type of product that ROH tries to put out there. I'm not a fan of a lot of the matches that so many of the ROH fans love to get. Four five-star ratings. Oh my god, Michael Elgin is a classic workhorse motherfucker. Uh, I'm not a big fan of matches that tell no story, have no purpose, where guys are just spot bumping their way through fucking things, and we're supposed to pop to that. You know, there's, to me, there's no art to it. I see these guys taking a bunch of unnecessary risks for far too little money for no fucking reason, frankly. Uh, when I watch the television show, you know, I see a show that is poorly produced. You know, the lighting's bad. Many things are bad. Whenever I have checked it out, I've never been impressed. And whenever I have tried to check it out, especially since I went to Sinclair, I can never make it through more than 15 or 20 minutes of the show. And then when I go back to all the times that I actually used to, unlike a lot of the alleged ROH fans, I actually paid for the iPay-per-views instead of streaming them, whether they were $9.99 or $14.99 was irrelevant to me. When I would consistently see audio issues, have experienced audio issues, uh, video issues, combination of both, uh, you know, at some point in time, and they would never really own up to it, and they would never really make it right. They would just sit there and make pathetic excuses, and their fucking bots would make pathetic-ass excuses for them. You know, it, it turned me off to the product. It did. And I think that's ultimately what did it, was the fact that there were several shows that I actually paid for that most of the ROH people didn't pay for. Um, and then every time there was always some type of issue. When you take into account that I really don't like the way they put together their TV shows, I think the production values are still horrendous. Uh, you know, the fact that a lot of times when they're airing on Sinclair, they're airing on Saturday or Sunday nights, 10.30, 11.30, sometimes here in the East Coast. I don't want to be watching wrestling at that time of, of the week at that time. So that's why I don't watch ROH. It's a plethora of reasons. Hiya! Karate! ROH time! Ninjutsu, Jujutsu, motherfucker! So anyways, thanks to you guys that submitted your Twitter questions for this Q&A. I enjoyed it. Make sure you stay tuned to this channel for part two of this weekly Q&A while I will answer uh, the best of the Facebook questions. And make sure you check out the other great content here on OTRS Central.